Well, good evening. Nice to see you again. It's a beautiful summer's day today, uh, and it is the day after the summer solstice. I couldn't go out last night for the longest day, so uh, the next best thing come out the next day. And I think we're in for really quite a glorious sunset tonight. Um, so I've come to one of my favourite locations out in the Shropshire Hills, which is an area of outstanding natural beauty here in the UK, uh, and is renowned for its rock formations. And I think it's a good opportunity to demonstrate something that I've been meaning to talk about for a while in my videos. And that's how you can take advantage of a feature that almost every camera these days has. It's one of my favorite spots to come to because it's like 360 views in any direction you want and there's plenty of things to get a picture of as well it's not just things on the horizon uh, there's lots of stuff in the foreground you're going to see these rocks over here the rock formations up here are just special in themselves i can't think of many conditions that wouldn't be suited for this location you can have a bright blue sky day like today you could have mist rain snow whatever and it would be gorgeous up here and in a couple of months time all this heather will be out there you can see all growing down here so uh yeah this is one of my favorite spots for photography and it's my brother's first time up here where is he there so uh brought him up on a particularly nice evening so he can get get it first time for himself so as you well know i'm a massive fan of using affordable gear that's why i set up this channel it's because i wanted to show people that you can use affordable gear in a a really effective way and still be a great photographer even if you can't afford the best cameras but of course with not using the best cameras what that means is that there are sometimes some drawbacks there's bound to be uh, particularly with a crop sensor camera like the one i use now uh, if you use a crop sensor that's where your sensor is smaller than full frame um, there's a little problem sometimes with the dynamic range now what does dynamic range mean well, it's basically how varied the range of light your sensor can pick up without either blowing out the highlights or not picking up the shadows. So if you've got a really shadowy area next to a really bright spot, for example, all these, let me see, all these rocks down here and a bright sky behind, what's bound to happen with a low dynamic range on your camera is that your, the sky will either be too bright or those rocks will be too dark. Now, you might just give up and think that there's nothing you can do about that, and that's just the reality of owning uh, a camera that doesn't have the dynamic range. But that's not true at all. And I want to demonstrate in this video that there's a specific way that pretty much every camera now can overcome that problem really easily. So you can see an example here of exactly what I mean. There's this really cool scene where there's like a bowl uh, by this sort of rock formation where the sun's setting directly down the middle. Now, normally with a camera, if you try and take a shot, for example, take this one that's underexposed. So we're exposed to the highlights. You can't see any of the detail in the rocks. Whereas if I try and expose for the rocks, those highlights are completely blown out. Now, you'd think that's an impossible situation, but if I do this with the camera now, so it's quite easy to do. You see here, you've got like an exposure bar. Most cameras will have that. And all you need to do is just press on it and you can see you can adjust the exposure so you could go make a picture darker you can make it brighter but what we're going to do is we want to have three one that's too bright one that's too dark and one that the camera thinks is correctly exposed so what we're going to do is really easy you just press on it and you scroll the wheel and what that does is you see gives you the option of darker and it gives you the option of darker and brighter and then you select that and then when you take a picture now, three shots that we can use to get a good exposure. 
that is a bracketed shot. And what that means is I can blend those three together and means that we can get all the detail without the highlights being blown out or the shadows being too dark. Now, of course, if you just take those three pictures, you've just got three pictures of different exposures. That's no good to you. What you need to do is blend those exposures together. So let's go back to the studio and I'll show you exactly how you can do that. Okay, so this is a couple of days later and we're gonna make this super quick because there's hundreds of tutorials how to do this on YouTube uh, and I don't need to go on about it. Uh, but I did wanna show you how to do it because there's an important thing you need to keep in mind if you are gonna do an HDR image, which I wanna demonstrate by doing this one. So let's do it here. So here we have our three exposures. Uh, one that was exposed for the shadows, so you can see the sky is way too bright. Uh, the one that was exposed for the highlights, you can see all the sky, all the detail, but nothing in the shadows. And then the sort of the exposure the camera thought was right. So that's what you would come away with. And as you can see, the highlights are way too blown out and the shadows are too dark. There's just not enough detail in the dynamic range to just use that photo. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna select our three photos, and then we're simply gonna right click, and then we're gonna to go to Photo Merge, HDR Merge. Let it do its thing. Uh, you can wait for the preview if you want. I generally don't tend to wait for the preview. Uh, I tend to have the degos amount to high. Uh, I've never really noticed a difference in any level, uh, especially if you use a tripod, you won't get any ghosting. That's where there's slight movement in the image, so the edges don't line up. If you use a tripod, it's not a problem and then you just uh, don't apply auto settings. That's an important one. Uh, it's up to you if you do do that, but if you do that, then you give all the control over the editing to, to Lightroom software, and I like to keep control of that. So you just click Merge. It'll just take a couple of seconds here, uh, depending on how fast your computer is. Um, and then, voila, we have uh, four images now. So we've got three images stacked together to create a fourth image, which is why there's a little number four there you can see down in the bottom. So that is an HDR image. Uh, that's three images blended together. So you've got the highlights and the shadows in really good detail. Might not look like it now, but as we begin to edit, you'll be able to see that if we bring the highlights right down, we've got loads of detail in the sky. You can see all the colors. The only thing that's blown out is the sun and you're never gonna be able to pick that up. So that's absolutely fine. Now this is where the warning comes in. The shadows, you could you could take them all the way up. Look at all that detail that's kept in these shadows. But how unnatural does that look? <laughs> it looks awful. So when it comes to HDR images, keep your shadows dark. You want the detail, but remember that shadows are supposed to be shadowy. They're supposed to be dark. So keep them quite low. I'm gonna keep it down to sort of, uh, sort of about there, maybe 48. 50. It still looks shadowy, but you can still see the detail in the rocks. Now, this does need a little bit of a crop. 16 by 9, let's say, because it's nice. Let's get that sun on the third line. Yeah. There we go. And there you have a pretty natural looking HDR image. Uh, the colors are really intense, um, so we, I might just bring the saturation down a bit by sort of 10. Got a bit of a white line on the edge. Let's just constrain the crop as well. So that's it, so it fills the frame. Now, I'm not going to go through all the editing. That's up to you how you do it. But another little warning, um, if you apply a preset, let's see. Say if I go for my preset portrait glow, now what often happens with portrait glow is see the shadows get brought right up. So you wanna make sure that if you do apply a preset, it's got high shadows that you keep that a bit further down. Um, but other than that, that's all you need to do. Obviously you edit as you want. 
uh, I'll go through, do a few local edits before uh, this goes up on my website. But I think this is actually a portfolio picture once I've edited it a little bit and I'm happy with it because these rocks are a bit blue at the moment, that sort of thing. So I'm going to change a few things. And if you want to see it on my website, then go to joshuapeg.com. So now that I've shown you how you can bracket photos, hopefully that was a little bit helpful to you at least. I kept that bit short uh, because th that's probably why you've come to this video if you've clicked it the first time. Um, normally I like to just talk about the pictures I take, why I take them and kind of tell the story of the day, but I thought I'd share something a bit practical today. So I, I really hope that's been helpful. Uh, if you have found the video helpful, then give it a like. I'd really appreciate that. If you're not subscribed, please consider that too. You know, I like to have honest conversations about making photography affordable and enjoyable. Um, and if you want to watch another one of my videos, uh, then watch this video here and I'll see you next time.